Hey there folks, so I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the Keio Plaza Hotel and it's right in the heart of Shinjuku. This is where we stayed for the past three nights and it's a very nice hotel, you know, we've enjoyed every moment of it overall and obviously you'll see the footage once, you know, the video keeps going but it's a very... I think simple and modest hotel, very business-like, you know, they don't, it's for people that are just wanting to come sleep, shower, maybe grab a few things at the convenience store, but it's in a very well-placed um, location, you know, we have the government building right behind us, which I'll show in just a moment, and, you know, it's close to the train station and the subway station, and there's a lot of nightlife and restaurants, and you can walk to the Odaku department store, as well as some other nightlife, the uh, red light district, I believe it was, that we went to the other night. But there's definitely a lot around here, um, a few parks as well, but you know, like anywhere you stay in Tokyo, you definitely should take the subway to really get around and avoid the taxis, but I'll make a whole separate video about tips and tricks and little hints about what we learned from our first time here in Tokyo. So let's start off the tour by taking a look at our hotel room. We didn't book anything out of the ordinary, just a standard hotel room, no suite or anything like that. And what was surprising and interesting was the three beds, as you see right here. Now there are three of us in the room, myself and my parents. We didn't request three beds, we didn't ask for any changes or anything special as far as the sleeping arrangement. But they just gave us three beds, which it's no big deal, but we just thought that was something interesting and unique. Now the hotel room does have all the standard features, a safe, the mini fridge, cups and glasses for tea, a regular TV. It's very minimal, not no art or anything other than what you just saw on the wall. And this hotel also provides a free smartphone. Now we had an international data plan, so we didn't have to use this, but this phone was free for you to take out of the hotel I'm assuming you can access all the Google Maps and everything outside of Wi-Fi, but like I said, we didn't have to use it, but this was available for hotel guests. There is also free water, which we don't find too often, at least here in America. You always have to pay for any drinks that are in the room. And just a simple room or a simple view outside of our room. Um, we are in Shinjuku, which is basically a business district, so not much going on outside of our window. Here is another view of the um, bedroom setup and the beds. Here's a simple phone and lamps and a clock right there. And here is the bathroom area. This is the outside sink for, I'm assuming, if ladies need to do your hair and makeup. Closet, pretty simple. There were some slippers in there for us as well, which was a nice little feature to have. And the bathroom was pretty standard as well, sink, shower, toilet. This little goodie box was pretty unique and ni a nice touch to the room. They had toothbrushes, razors, a body towel, hairbrushes, soaps, q-tips, cotton balls, pretty much all the necessities you would need in case you forgot like a toothbrush or your hairbrush or something so you wouldn't have to go out and buy it. Of course in our case going on a cruise we would need something for the next few weeks but during our stay here that was more than enough. The toilet is um, built with a bidet as well and just a standard shower and towel setup. As I mentioned here is the government building that is outside one of the entrances. This hotel kind of has two entrances to the hotel itself. This side of the hotel where you just saw the government building and at the end of the video I'll also show you the other side which is just the other side of the hotel. Nothing too special over there. And walking in, you can see the lobby area. There is the front desk to check in and what you just saw where you can drop off your luggage if you need to. And far in the distance, I wasn't, um, I didn't have a chance to go up close to it, but that is one of the restaurants that is available. Here you have kind of a concierge or help desk. Everything is clean, simple, nothing too crazy about it. And there are, I guess, a few basement levels of the hotel, which I'll show you in just a moment. But here is one side of the hotel as well.
and here we have a little bit of a shopping area now underneath where I'm about to show you is where all the restaurants are and here are pretty much all the shops we didn't really go through any of them because we don't usually buy anything from the hotel shops but there's some pretty interesting and unique items that were available but like I said this is more of a I guess more of a luxury and and it's nothing really practical and not really um, souvenirs that you can look for and like here they have ties and clothes and um, it says a pharmacy and souvenir but you know nothing we really saw that were that was worth taking a look at and here is one of the restaurants down below I believe it was a French restaurant if I'm not mistaken and this was the convenience store and another an actual Japanese restaurant back here now the restaurants themselves were pretty pricey you know a typical hotel restaurant the convenience store on the other hand was priced just about the same as any 7-eleven or Lawson store that you would to visit outside of the hotel so in our case we were stuck in the hotel one day due to the typhoon and even though 7-eleven I think it was open part of the day but we didn't even have to leave the hotel because our own hotel convenience store was not only stocked with pretty much all the same items but it was also priced the same thing one common item we would buy was the egg salad sandwich I think outside and just for lack of my memory in US dollars it was under two dollars at the hotel it was also under two dollars so very similarly priced and here are just some of the options of the restaurants as you can see 4800 was the price for one of those plates so it can get pretty pricey especially if you are a family traveling here and you want some other options available Here there's also a bakery of sorts or I guess a little patisserie. I did take a look at here and there weren't really that many items that I was interested in. It was definitely more high end but even here you can see some of the breads and pastries. They just weren't really appealing and they were kind of pricey as well. So there wasn't anything worth it to go in here and you can get better pastries at the convenience store. Now throughout the hotel there were some curios that had all these Disney figurines and statues. I'm not sure what that was all about but that was pretty interesting to see that and have a little bit of Disney magic on a non-Disney hotel. Now heading out this way, this is the other entrance that I did mention earlier as well. And like I said, it doesn't really matter which way you come in because ultimately the lobby is on this floor of the entrances. So you don't have to worry about which one to go through. Um, it just makes it more convenient, I guess, depending on which way traffic or which way your taxi is going, that they can drop you off on either side of the hotel. Now our hotel also had what seemed to be a mini museum set up here and this was also a place where they do a dinner and a show. We didn't actually notice this until the day we were checking out when we were just hanging out in the lobby to look around but this was actually pretty unique to walk around and I was able to capture all this footage for you all and I believe it was kind of a Japanese play that they put on while you do have dinner so like I said dinner and a show and it was a very it seemed like a very cultural experience that if you wanted to take part in and if you had the time to do so that you can opt for without even having to leave your hotel I wasn't able I don't think I got the prices for this area but you know I'm sure if you visit the hotel website you would be able to find all the information you need
Alrighty folks, that wraps up the walkthrough of the KO Plaza Hotel. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And make sure to stay tuned for my other videos throughout Tokyo and the rest of Japan. As well as the uh, Japan Asia Cruise Tour, um, or the cruise that we are going on. Uh, thanks again for watching. Be sure to like my video and subscribe down below. And stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.